I, I'm not going to even do research on this video. Um, this one is about Jimmy Carter. It's not dedicated to anybody because these people are nothing, really. That I would appreciate that would make any difference in my life for other than for worse. Uh, Jimmy Carter was a close associate of Vladimir Putin, just as was, just as became, he was a transitional president, you know, he was a transitional president between Richard Nixon and uh, everything, all the evil that followed afterwards. Uh, and everything was... The whole system of United States of America was <laughs> yeah. it was all hanged to the thread like this, like this, uh, to this case, to my case. American presidents. sometimes regarded me as American president, as the only American president. That's true, because United States of America didn't have any president for the last 50 years. United States of America bet absolutely everything on this case, and did manage through me to literally collapse Soviet Union and Yugoslav Federation. Yeah, the people such as George Bush, Richard Nixon, Bush, Clinton, etc. American politics wise, I don't like using the word bet. It would be not the right thing for me to say they bet on the right thing, that they made the right choice. For the last, for the last 50 years, there were politicians, so that's why, for me to clarify the word bet, why this is not a proper term for me to use. There were politicians, and there was a little child, baby. It started with my being, I told you, nine months is as far as I can trace to Berlin. And I know that before Berlin, I did find myself already in America and in, in also in Great Britain. There were two countries I was before. I was in Germany, I was in America, and I was in Britain. I know that. They bet in this case because this also involves the issue of mental illness in this video. It's a little bit deep because they were left with no choice. I should say what I want to say is they didn't have any better alternative because of the public, because of you, the Americans. who, in the eye of the evil, talking here about the Central Intelligence Agency, FBI, uh, forced these politicians to support me, to wage support behind me. There was a baby, there was a child, 
and when they were politicians. And these politicians This is an average opinionated people that surfaced uh, through a channels for which American politics believe uh, would do a difference for the nation. And they did. Everything between the Russia, I should say, Soviet Union and United States of America was just great. Till I pop up on the, on the stage. When I pop up on the stage, everything just went collapse, kaboom. Like Dennis from Ukraine would say. Everything just blew all over the place. Uh, I was a, such an impossible baby to deal with. Uh, really, 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 nothing ever possibly existed like this. And it's actually thanks to the Russians. Because it would not exist, it wouldn't be Russians, Russian nationalists who believed would be better off in Russia than in the Soviet Union. They were so Serbian, Chetnik alike people. The same shit went on in Yugoslavia that, you know, um, that not even Americans possibly, not even British and others could possibly. Uh, sustain anymore this such an obvious appetites for ethnic cleansing which were so immense intense in a Soviet society because you have a Russian the same like a Serb in Yugoslavia that would just treat other members of the society like like a pencil basically like a necessary evil um, it's like you go to the store, you like you would go to the store and you would just load yourself with the merchandise, whatever, and forgot to pay at the counter, basically, and just walk out. Somebody would dare to to call you and say, or anything like this, you would turn around and then you would pull the gun out and just. Poof, this was a Ruski Serbian system, basically. Say fucking something, and tomorrow you're gone. Whatever company. I, I did spoke about this stuff, all right? So it doesn't matter. It, what matters is they wanted, the Russians wanted the war. Serbs wanted the war. They wanted the war. And they knew they're not going to get the war from people that are pacifist, um, from the people that um, are their supporters. We have a lot of supporters here in Slovenia, Puchan, Pahor, etc., 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 people like this. They know they, they're not going to get the war from people like this. All right. So these people here in Slovenia, I mentioned, and it was the same like this throughout the Soviet Union, the same thing with in respect to Russia, knew also about the stuff I'm talking about, and they had agreement with one another, uh, so to say that they had a different kind of assignment to get this. If you want to refer to maybe even as a transition, whatever, done, OK? Uh, so they knew that they are going to eventually lose Kazakhstan and Tajikistan and Azerbaijan and Chechnya and Georgia and so on and so forth. They, they knew and Ukraine and 
they know about this stuff. They know that there are going to be costs in the process. Um, but the disparity, the um, inequality, um, yeah, and unhappiness, obviously, grew within the society so deep over the course of the time that uh, they figure out would be the best to just um, go on our own and, uh, you know, steal whatever they managed to populate during Soviet occupation or in Yugoslav occupation in other republics and uh, brandishing new maps, state maps, and so on. And I don't have the proof that would suggest me that this was not done in complete accordance, agreement with London, with Washington DC. I don't have any kind of proof that would state to me, Bob, Sebastian, Bushian, this is just not the case. I don't have the proof. I do have a lot of other proofs though. Um, I, I did a lot of stuff I placed online, but still, um, we're going back all the way to the root of the evil. You know, the first president in the United States of America uh, was Richard Nixon. Richard Nixon was, uh, Richard Nixon received from me enormous amount of uh, support. Yeah, Richard Nixon received from me hardline support, all the support he 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 needed. Whatever whatever he was about well, his whereabouts, whatever he was doing, I was supporting Richard Nixon at every step of the way. And uh, it was this famous incident between Josip Broz Tito. Uh, I became unprecedentedly hated by Josip Broz Tito and. Soviets, if you like Soviets, Russians. I don't like saying Soviets because really in the Soviet Union, there really was one side that was pure evil. As for the rest, it was like this and it was like that. Um, Whoever could afford whatever, you know, if you said something that was not in line with whatever the Russian side wanted, you could disappear the next day. So at the earliest convenience, people tried to liberate themselves. The wars broke out and in Chechnya and all over the place. So... I don't think I can go and judge others in respect to all this stuff. I did receive support from a lot of unlikely sources. Uh, but, you know, in the, in the circumstances, just go that far, nothing further than that. So the thing is that this, this video is about Jimmy Carter, the one who inherited legacy of Richard Nixon was Jimmy Carter. And it was really a transition period between Jimmy Carter and Richard Nixon when Josip Broz Tito appeared in at Washington DC and demanded outside of the White House he approached to uh, to Richard Nixon he felt closer to the Richard Nixon than he felt uh, to Jimmy Carter uh, because he knew Richard Nixon for a longer time uh, because um, he got a lot of stuff done through Richard Nixon. Uh, Carter already was a president and um, Carter was my new supporter, so this is how they 
they passed their uh, presidencies, basically. Everything was based on this case. And um, this was my new uh, president, Jimmy Carter, uh, who appeared, uh, liked me, uh, Yossi Brostito had uh, Serbs along with him in uh, Washington, D.C. on opportunity. They, uh, they, they also pressured uh, American diplomacy to uh, help them basically get me killed. Yeah, this is the beginning of the Jimmy Carter, basically. Uh, Jimmy Carter was present already before. Uh, he would visit Richard Nixon. Um, however, he, did, he gave company to Richard Nixon. They were not sure whom they're going to elect. Uh, and it just happened so that it was Richard Nixon that uh, had to go and was replaced by the Jimmy Carter. And so... Um, Richard Nixon uh, suffered big fiasco in Vietnam. Uh, he had all kinds of uh, problems. Uh, however, American diplomacy already back then uh, blamed for the departure of Rich Richard Nixon me. I was blamed for departure of Richard Nixon. Um, Well, that's the kind of stuff they use to actually get psychologically closer to the Russian side. And, of course, a new kind face popped up on a picture, as I stated, it was Jimmy Carter. Like, from the people that, in Slovenian languages, it could match okoli um, they were circling around like uh, cats around a, a hot pot, the politicians. You know, kasha, I don't know how you say that exactly in English right now. Uh, oatmeal or whatever, with milk, whatever, if the cats like one, I don't know. Um, boiled oil, oil, because it's too hot, you know, and it just... They're just sniffing around and uh, they like push one another, which one is going to get first, you know. Uh, it's going to, as soon as it's going to cool off and then they eat, basically. That's a kind of saying, Diddy, in Slovenian language. And so, here's the problem. It's, uh, impossible for me to determine what exactly went on with this American diplomacy, with this American politic. And it's, it's the question that remained open, uh, hopefully, till 2022, when uh, a total hell broke loose. It's a question that is actually, excuse me, remain open up to very today. And today is November the 20th, 2023. Um, hell broke loose in Ukraine again in 2022 after Putin already uh, invaded Crimea and eastern part of Ukraine. Uh, of course, it doesn't stop. He wants a bigger and bigger and bigger piece of chunk. Uh, and uh, this is the kind of question that remained open even after I liberated Eastern Europe uh, and, um, you know, even some other parts of the world, I would say. Uh, 
Uh, so I would love to think about liberated, but is, you know, I, I am not sure about this issue, liberated. Because we have a lot of work to do uh, within NATO, within the United States of America. Um, the only good uh, aspect in respect to all this, I would say that uh, media coverage, the background of American diplomacy, uh, always favored freedom. Uh, of people from under the Iron Curtain. Yeah, so every Joe, average American would say, yeah, we want Poland free, we want Czech Republic, Slovakia, Romania, Bulgaria. Uh, we want this countries, uh, you know, free, you know, we want them to have freedom, free market, etc. You know, they, you know, the, the Stalin became really famous with uh, Holodomor, killing people um, through the hunger and uh, then with executions, incarcerations, uh, gulags, uh, psychiatric mistreatment, nobody weird in the United States of America, nobody fucking know about any of that. That's kind of a weird, isn't it? I mean, you, you don't know anything? No, why? Maybe because probably you Americans had a lot of that shit yourself, I would say. So you kept silent. You knew about it. You knew what the main instruments were and still are, appears. And yet you chose to keep silent about certain issues you might have shared with your Soviet counterpart up to date. Uh, so there was somebody on the picture that uh, just uh, was became a pain in the butt to this president. And that's little me uh, who remained loyal to uh, you know once the Russians uh, started to mistreat me uh, you know all they had to do is just throw me a few insults and um, I was extremely sensitive as a child you know I was extremely sensitive as a child uh, very intelligent uh, and um, uh, I did not forgive for the stuff. Thanks God, I did not forgive. My schoolmates insisted that once something is done to me, that I never let off the hands anymore. That some, when somebody did something to me, that I would not release one no matter what. Uh, I don't know. It was everything like this. Um... But yeah, I mean, if you did something bad to me, you you could bet that we will meet again. This is just the way it is, a policy. Um, unless I, of course, deserve it. If I feel that I deserved it, you could, whatever. It didn't matter to me. Um, Mr. Turgut, Mr. Turgut was a Turkish guy from Celebrity Cruise Lines, from this ship, Apollo, Meridian, uh, what became San Vista before it was sank in 99. He knew about this example. All my co-workers have seen that, that, uh, you know, Mr. Turgut uh, was a, like a shorter guy, Turkish guy. And um, he worked with me. He was a busboy, waiter. And uh, he... Everybody was teasing him. And I started to tease him, too. Uh, what the hell was it about? I don't know. We were just... He, he was kind of interesting. And... Uh, but he was extremely hardworking. And... Um, uh, when I came in this business without any background, uh, it was a really rough guy. This was a rough guy. I mean, rough guy as rough as can be. I mean, but the thing about it is that uh, 
I was always grateful to him. I was always grateful to others that I learned, that I had a capacity, uh, uh, you know, the right to be next to them and learn from them. And um, one time I did something. Uh, I don't know what I did behind him. Maybe just did something like this or whatever. And he turned around and he smacked me he, quite good. And um, I did go rent and mad, and it looked like I am gonna just. And the thing is that I realized that I I I deserved it in a moment, and I apologized to him, just like this. This is life with me. Is people don't have this kind of common sense, not the strength to go over stuff take responsibility as fast and respond in a such a way uh, so for me to say for me to actions as people know me when i fuck it up something i i wouldn't go after anybody but if you know people take you know advantage and uh, they would just you know how can i say you know I'm not going to get into this stuff and leave themselves in some kind of sadism and stuff like this. That's a different story, right? This, but, uh, <laughs> people never go after somebody who is uh, strong. People never go after somebody who is not necessarily strong, but they never go after somebody who is, oh, yes, they go. If they see you that you are strong, but you don't have the support in the system, everything is against you. Oh, how good they feel about inflicting the harm, damage, injuries to the person like this, especially if they're smaller. How good it makes them feel to have ability to do unto somebody like this oh yes they do even more so um people do see themselves in causing other people harm a lot they do have people involved in mk to have a pleasure of it to harm to injure watch and wait in anticipation that something bad is going to develop to the person they enjoyed that kind of stuff. It was a lot of that kind of, it was a culture. It was totally a crazy culture about that kind of stuff. Uh, at other person's expense. Every politician, every politician, talking about the US president that inherited the chair at the White House, every fucking one of them, was a nice guy, he is set into the chair. Once they sat into the chair, this story between Richard Nixon, for him I was, uh, his son, his boy, it all repeated with every fucking American president, every fucking American president, when it was time to go, that's when they started to give hard time problem, get involved in the torture, uh, and introduce another guy, the second guy, as a nice guy, parallel to it. And then you would have like a waiter coming from the dark, a CIA guy, a BIA guy, whoever, who would suggest, well, we thought that this would be a better choice for you. So we're going to replace him with this and so on and so forth. So, uh, you know, every fucking one of them. The relationship between me, American presidents and the American public uh, could not be more in contrast to what American presidents have. Uh, presented in uh, oftentimes in my eyes uh, and uh, and their actions from behind the curtain uh, 
Um, they, they would probably argue and say, oh, well, uh, you were too strong. You came out every time too strong and so on. And that would be possibly their only defense. Uh, the thing about it is that uh, I have to argue that and say, no, it's not true. American presidents were just a people that uh, very, very often times when they would start their duties, they were all right, they were okay, they were fresh, they were obviously there was a weird tear element very present. Uh, they would go and do exactly what they supposed, exactly what I expected from them to perform. And through the course of the time, they would become more and more sluggish, uh, more and more insecure about what the fuck you're doing. It's a tough world in a diplomacy world. Uh, and maybe the best, the individual who did the best, um, as far as American presidency, I would not go into that because they all came with uh, really benefit of a doubt. I said even today, today is November the 20th when I'm video recording this stuff, 2023. I am, we are not sure, I don't have a clear answer about whether these people sided with uh, Russia, with uh, Serbia in a genocide against others, or were they indeed uh, performing their public duties uh, best of their abilities due to diplomacy or anything? I was a diplomat myself, a better diplomat than any one of them, a diplomat that truly survived, diplomat that managed to uh, cause, uh, expose the, the Soviet violence in a crucial moments to uh, actually Moscow violence to, to others that were politically other republics in the Soviet Union, other than Russia republics in Soviet Union, and also Russians alone, because there was a lot of Russians that were extremely repressed. And uh, through this psychiatric mistreatment, imprisoned in Siberia, and very very poor society that uh, truly truly was uh, demoralized it hanged in there uh, and uh, as such did not find uh, the way forward other than to decay through this array basically through the through the through the chaos and the sending to wars and so on. It was just it was just bound to happen. No matter what, despite the support they received, military support, all kinds of support from the West, uh, they couldn't keep up with it. And so I don't know when it comes to American presidency, this this question is still unanswered. As I stated, today is November the 20th, 2023. Uh, Jimmy Carter conditions his uh, meeting with the Josip Broz Tito with his, his uh, Richard Nixon is meeting with Yossi Brasita at the White House. He invited Richard Nixon, and that was at the request of Yossi Brostito, on opportunity, once he commenced his presidency, uh, conditioned me 
incident since the incident he it looked like that he had something in his hands uh, that was really really hot presented this to American diplomacy as a big success with Nixon uh, as a big proof and uh, all excited about stuff like this how the fuck can somebody really a president from one country back over there from Eastern Europe to get child basically killed uh, this is this is unprecedented this is ugly it's unheard of yeah but that's all there ever was and he was using this kind of issues uh, presenting them to me like that he accomplished something you know yeah I mean it's what unofficially presented to American diplomats society is their accomplishments and how what they managed and so on and so forth, you know, that kind of stuff. And they given me, waging me unconditional uh, support in a crucial moments um, with British, Germans, um, support that. Um, was excruciatingly genocidal. But there was nothing that the only thing they were doing is they would they would make the case bigger and bigger and bigger, more and more diplomats they would involve in it. So it would more and more difficult to get rid of me, basically. And it, it, it's it's good because I started as a child. So if you would go and kill the child, you would definitely look like a killer. Uh, and as it progressed with my age, with my growth, uh, this president's, it was less and less of the support of any kind from these people. Germany became united in the Eastern Europe half, uh, Soviet Union fall apart, Russia lost grip on Poland, uh, Ukraine, uh, Romania, Bulgaria, Hungary, Hungary, all these, even Baltic states, they had to let go. And so, uh, even Belarus, they had to let go, at least temporarily. Um, Frankly, there was no support. There was nothing really. There was only support for genocide. Um, Russians couldn't do without American presidents. And American presidents couldn't do more harm to me because of uh, American public, basically because of American people that uh, were watching this somewhat and uh, wonder about it. They wanted to know where this politic is, uh, how this politic is going to answer, apologize, basically. Um, you, know, you have a White House, you have a U.S. Congress, and you have United States of America. Um, not necessary would the United States of America see the White House way or the U.S. Congress way. Uh, this is basically goes hand in hand, but if the politic of a country differs uh, so much from the will of the people, of course, like in every system, it can grow into a major problem. So what can I say? Um, George Bush was an outstanding pr uh, friend of Vladimir Putin. And on a dinner with Jimmy Carter, uh, on opportunity, uh, George Bush stated to me, it was uh, supposedly would be Jimmy Carter that went on to ask George Bush to help me out, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But again, it all ended. It seems like everything um, always ended in. Uh, wow, I didn't realize that stuff. That's not good. It always ended, you know, with uh, 
it always ended with uh, disappointments. I don't like disappointments. It always ended with disappointments. And an opportunity in a dinner with George Bush, George Bush clarified me that they are not going to help me out. They are not going to be the one resolving this issue uh, unless they would have to. So when it comes to American presidents, I don't have anything else I would add to this. I think I was, I was fair. I think that I, uh, I presented this issue uh, in a most realistic way as to one possibly can present one. Uh, I absolutely don't see myself as an American president. Uh, I refuse to see myself as American president or anything like this because um, because I, I never was a part of these people and these people never ever were a part of me. And I was not the one who made this, such a decision. It was them who were making this kind of decisions. Politicians are beasts that um, one is better off, in my opinion, uh, with uh, nothing having to do with. Um, however, this again is uh, very relative because in certain things, uh, you become the unavoidable. You can't be without the politicians. Um, they do project the will of the nation, in uh, which becomes crucial element during harsh crisis. Um, That's why I mentioned earlier this connection between me, American presidents, and uh, nation itself. And on the other uh, occasions, uh, they can be quite uh, ordinary people. It's... For Jimmy Carter, I would say that he was a transitional president between the United States of America, real United States of America, and George Bush. Given that George Bush the lowest score possible on a scale of American presidents, I would say. Score completely shit score. Like the lowest score. The second individual that I would give the low score would be Donald Trump. Probably the two presidents that just go hand in hand with one another. Shit. Complete shit. Drek. Um, Richard Nixon had faced a lot of pressure for uh, remaining as decisively uh, President who presented uh, resistance to the Soviet Union. Uh, and it was just uh, a number of these politicians that gathered around and they were making really bad atmosphere around it all. And uh, this is at least how they presented to me the whole thing is. But he did have a, he did, he had a real problems. He had a lot of, he faced a lot of a lot of wrong decisions like today Joe Biden is 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 basically repeating the same thing like Joe Biden was a politician involved in it since my early childhood I told you about this but you know when you look at the Vietnam it's north south and uh, Vietnamese nation was divided people in the north saw themselves 
uh, with Chinese and people in the south saw themselves as part of the uh, American support uh, free part of the, some kind of society that will pertain to uh, more autonomous uh, international relations um, for that matter I'm not saying that they made the right decision or anything like this um, it truly is questionable because I myself feel that as an Eastern European uh, I came to terms that based on my case Eastern Europe in the future will be deciding the sides let us say uh, when it comes to international politics it could well happen that you're going to have entire Eastern Bloc Eastern European Bloc turning completely away from the United States of America Western Europe NATO and so on the thing is that um, this case proves beyond any doubts that as a people, as a human beings here, and that's an that's extremely important factor to consider, is that um, I would say that, that, that we're not seen as equal. I would say that I was not seen as a human. I, this, this, this is a completely inhumane mistreatment uh, the Jimmy Carter for example had a daughter and this daughter liked me and uh, there's a little part I'm going to dedicate to Rosaline Carter and uh, Uh, Rosaline Carter claimed her entire life that I was mentally ill. Okay, that's a female. Um, I don't think that she should be a teacher. I don't think that she had a qualification to be other than a housewife at home because of her eccentric uh, insane personality I would say I don't think that that she was qualified for other than totally independent work something away from public I would say something like that I'd say but this, this is just based on fact that she was not capable to understand uh what the fuck is to be drugged up held fight by the throat terrorized beaten up uh face obstacles that are for the human beings extremely unlikely to survive uh and given that she came from a background it was a perfect background with a perfect parents with a perfect absolutely support from the society perfect basically without any obstacles in life uh, got her education as a wealthy portion of American society uh, and uh, just wanted to be titty basically about absolutely everything let me, let me give you an example because you did destroy them and what I meant by this is I placed this back on a dental tube because I felt that the danger is it's gone you would be amazed but I was much better off just leaving it like this 
the more crazier I looked, the better the chance of a survival without doing stuff like this I wouldn't even be alive here's the buckle I'm gonna fix just as a police investigator stated me I have to he um he knifed one you see he went ahead and knifed one and he also demonstrated this stuff to me during MK Ultra. this was not the only one he did this is one of his favorite gigs which belt you're gonna buy at AliExpress and eBay and so on. No, you don't understand anything about what this shit is. Uh, in a circumstances like this, once you start act as competent person and do this and, and all kinds of stuff, the only thing that happens, you don't have to do it, this disappears. And so that's absolutely everything in life. That's how police does the job. And the more you act competent, the more you act, you demonstrate competence, the more you demonstrate the ability to control absolutely every aspect in life, the faster you go into the psychiatric hospital in the case like this. And you don't come out alive from the psychiatric hospital in the case like this. In this case, I said to myself today, it was good that I took job for the security officer. Security officers are laid back. They do their shit, they sit, and they do their stuff. It's not physically demanding. But it's the portion of society, statistic-wise, that most often is a knowledge is mentally ill. exactly because of the issues that I stated to you. And then again, if I would choose a job that would be demanding physical, that would be demanding for me mental competence, uh, that harder the fall would be, that harder I would collapse down and break into a shutter in a million pieces. And it's Living corpses next to the graves throughout America that can prove exactly the recipe for survival. Um, there is none. You can just try your best and. Uh, Anything that uh, oh, you can use to outsmart will do good to you. When I acted competent, uh, did the stuff, started to do the stuff, despite everything they were doing to me, uh, that much harder, that harder I fell down afterwards. Because they take every fucking dime from you. They, they rip you apart. They rip you in pieces completely. The one at the top, the one that decides about your employment, always is the right. Remember this. And the teachers always are correct. Up to 30 kids that assaulted me at once in a high school, actually, all the way to the high school. Grammar school. You know? Don't tell me not, because I tested it every fucking day of my life. So I know how it goes. So do you think that these are presidents, that this is, these are American presidents, these are worthy people for you to refer to as a president? Let me know in the comment section. <laughs> uh, Rosaline Carter was eccentric lunatic in a real sense of the word that... pushed away her daughter who wanted to marry me, Jimmy Carter's daughter, and the husband who gave a green light who wanted somehow for the two of us to meet and get married. And have her pick up somebody from the street 
in and out who threw the child out and it was better than to marry a mentally ill guy according to Rosaline Carter who entered a death certificate just as I was told the case is going to be according to MK Ultra scenario at least this is what they claimed they claimed they gave me a death threats they issued me a death threats uh, claiming that the physicians from Jimmy Carter a staff that Jimmy Carter used at home that they would use him that that he used um, that I have to be extremely careful how I what I say about Jimmy Carter and this and that if you're gonna say about anything bad about Jimmy Carter the only thing that's gonna happen is uh, both of them are gonna disappear and they give me exactly the scenario which involved uh, his wife and also what would become a Jimmy Carter then you had these pictures on the internet with the Jimmy Carter and with the A uh, and that's was translated to me that he's a supporter that he is a man who absolutely supports me supported me and that is his last legacy and to save me to help me pretty fucking insane man pretty fucking impossible to analyze how criminal how genocidal how murderous individual this actually is when I analyze this stuff um, how impossible for me to comprehend such a rotten character like this uh, obviously the payats waited until I managed to prove MK existence of MK Ultra case and evolve reveal the world about truly what went on with these people in the castles and their prime ministers foreign presidents from the west and so on and so forth right pretty pretty outrageous pretty disgusting obviously the Jimmy Carter was one of the people who waited looked forward to resolve this case for a longer time than anybody uh, he is 99 this year Ninety-nine, everybody knew was the number always. That uh, was my kind of number, and these older people, uh, including Queen Elizabeth, including Prince Philip, they became obsessed with these numbers. Ninety-nine, if it's going to be, what number is it going to be, and so on and so forth. It was these older folks started to. Uh, see themselves in things that uh, really uh, basically this is this is this is what's known as a guest lighting you know just driving people person targeted person wild insane through the torture merciless torture condition one all kinds of uh, giving one all kinds of conditions uh, and basically fucking by basically here I'm dead you know it was all about this hospice gear and all that kind of stuff. Jimmy Carter, espionage, he was in my case, including on Thailand. Uh, whatever chance he had to travel next to me and stick notes into the lives of other people that would approach me, he never missed the opportunity. Um, Mm. 
impossible that I could possibly, I, it, for me to find, uh, to describe pathetic, somebody pathetic, uh, I just, I am just, uh, I don't think you could find the person more pathetic than this, that this is, this is like, do looks of the fucking, of person being pathetic. This is, this is disgusting. It's despicable. It's, it's incredible. Basically, this is a person who drives the car 200 miles an hour on Autobahn and is smashing the cars and does not give a fuck. He's in whatever. Drives the car along the way and smash a pedestrian and he just leaves the scene and doesn't give a fuck about anybody. Totally, totally list of people when it comes to the American president, totally unaccountable for their actions without any responsibility whatsoever, working 24-7 or get one killed, no matter what. It's the best description about American presidents, people from the White House, including, and I'm going to say especially Joe Biden. I am in disbelief, I am in a shock that at the White House we had for the last 50 years people that were completely unaccountable, totally uh, unwilling to accept any kind of responsibility for absolutely anything, running affairs, uh, truly surviving on a diplomacy of somebody who was meant to be in his life and was just destroyed on every step of the way, basically ran policy of causing harm and injury, deliberate harm and injury, so they could float up there in their comfortable world of diplomacy and do basically chit-chat exchange business with a Russian side. And basically what resulted with more and more bombs being dropped throughout the Middle East, Africa. Uh, and as I said, right now it's November the 20, 2023, and we still don't know anything about the White House. We still don't know anything. Nothing is really being answered to this very day. We still don't know absolutely anything about who these people are inside of the White House, uh, on whose side, on what is it exactly these people, and they want it this way because it gives them the ability to prove me wrong. You can have it right for 50 years, and it's going to be that last time. You know, it's Rosaline Carter and Jimmy Carter both had a cancer. The thing is, I had cancer. They did create it, not one. They created an Ebola. Uh, they created several cancerous dots. They played with a the cancer. They were butchering deliberately infecting the body with cancerous dots. They wanted the cancer. They wanted the cancer on intestines, on, on colon. They wanted the cancer, lymphoma cancer. They wanted this cancers. They want, it's not, it's not, excuse me, cancer, but tumorous areas, the areas which likely would open reopen to the cancer. They wanted this stuff because they were doing the tests. They tested medications. They tested the food products. They were doing all kinds of stuff. If you want to know what kind of an impact does have cancer-wise certain food on lymphoma or on intestines or on whatever part of the body, um, you have to infect one. You understand me what I'm saying? You can go and test somebody, some kind of product on somebody that uh, does for the certain issue involving whatever, if you don't infect that part of the body, basically. And for that matter, you have to have a healthy subjects. The alcoholics aren't going to fucking do it. The smokers either. 
the drug addicts either. You get it? I mean, this is what I inherited from Richard Nixon all the way up since, through the Jimmy Carter and so on. And I got in return exactly this video here. This is what I got in return. Sl Finance Slovenian police to engage in a genocide against me with the Slovenian psychiatry. This is how they do the presidency. This is how they rule from their from their sofas. Basically, this is this is the, this is you want to know about American presidents? That's the truth about American presidents. This is the way it is, and that way they come. They have associated themselves to the Russians. Uh, to their potential enemies in a better way, in a more, they had to find some kind of a common grounds. Uh, Russians didn't want to see themselves as losers or whatever, and I guess it was uh, comforting when they saw me hanging in thread. They go back to this issue. For their life, basically. And, uh, you know, this is this is it. Before the fall of the Soviet Union and Yugoslavia, I knew what I had to do. I knew who the enemy was. When the Soviet Union had fallen, when Yugoslavia had fallen, Americans and Germans and Britons, they pulled in a war against me entire world. Whatever was there out there that still sided with me, upon the end of the Cold War, I had to face the war with the entire world. Everything. So that's why I said that it could well happen that the United States of America is going to stay without the giant chunk of what is today seen as an ally. Yeah, you're going to be fucking around in Ukraine and you're going to pay a tremendous, tremendous price. I'm telling you that you have been evaluated, watched by Eastern European countries from up very close, very closely. And your certainty now is becoming more and more in contrast to your uh, play with the sanity in this part of the world. We're very close. We are just border apart here with the Italy, with the Austria, I should say, and with the Germany. But we could not grow over the course of the years more stranger, really more alien than uh, what became evident through this case. And that's why I said earlier when I said about Vietnam, uh, you know, The war is being lost in uh, the war was lost in uh, the wars were lost. The wars are lost basically in a very through the politicians that they did not deserve basically being there and basically in the, in, in the White House, you know. I'm a loser. I'm a loser because I feel I'm a loser because I advocated Nixon, all the presidents, Reagan, Carter, Bush, all these presidents, I always advocated them. And it always came out that the stronger that I advocated them, the, the more I bleeded, 
the less productive these people were becoming, the less they engaged in activities they otherwise should. Uh, it became comfortable. And the question basically is still not being answered in what is today, November the 20th of 2023. We still don't know really who we are dealing with because it's the White House that keeps both doors open. I should say also, consequently, also U.S. Congress more and more. That's why I feel loser, because I'm bleeding, because my life is being decimated, destroyed, scattered all over the place, ruined totally. And for what? American diplomacy always was based on what they also refer to as a mental illness. Behind the doors, they always refer to me, to this stuff also, always as a mental illness. Like British, the same thing. British were basically presidents of the United States of America. The United States of America was always ran by the British. British side always decided about the United States of America. Once they would get a country in their block, a nation, um, they... I wouldn't say that they no longer would worry about, uh, but it was like self-understanding, self-evident uh, that they considered them as mentally ill, basically. It's like, take it, they would just like take certain issue for granted. And the more hatred, the more uh, willingness towards self-determination that country displayed toward the enemy that... Uh, against whom they were assisted, uh, the, more, the more mentally ill they poisoned them, treated them, basically. The more advantage is what I'm trying to say they took. So this is, this is you know, November the 20th, 2023, and uh, there's been a lot of questions in respect to the United States of America that's not being answered. The United States of America has a problem big problem uh, this politic this American politic uh, is a politic of a treachery next to being uh, considered by Rosaline Carter is mentally ill my entire life uh, for just giving him giving her the best I possibly could have uh, Yeah, the person that is abusive, eventually who she started to support the Russians in a sense of even what became physically challenging me with her facial characteristics for which she gestured are matching those of the Russians and so on. And this and that. That's how close Jimmy Carter was with the Putin, with the Vladimir Putin, with the Russian diplomacy. So today, when these people are goofing around over there at the stage, uh, you do acknowledge that Jimmy Carter was a transition from traditional United States of America, which stood up for the values of the Second World War into something completely different in the area of George Bush, Donald Trump, uh, and we don't know anything about Joe Biden yet because it's nothing decided about. For the Joe Biden, I insisted at the beginning of presidency that his extension of Donald Trump eventually that is going to cause that this is what he threatened with a turmoil in United States turmoil in United States of American politics and eventually deliver Donald Trump back into his presidential seat with Vladimir Putin. It's nothing determined in Ukraine when you look at it. It's a lack of ammunition. Uh, soldiers lack ammunition. Uh, the news that's coming from the United States of America is actually Ukraine, excuse me, is uh, everything is developing according to prearranged wars 
agreed ahead of the war wars uh, when you have two superpowers handshaking and then that little country fighting for its existence or its borders basically it's everything is i'm not, I'm not gonna say but absolutely everything you see in the media it's absolutely everything that was involved in mk ultra so a lot of questions not being resolved with ukrainian question maybe one day being resolved with my question never ever being resolved from the side of the united states of america the united states of america destroyed me 52 years of life Eventually, I became naturalized citizen, U.S. citizen, in 2000. Uh, it's nothing in this world United States of America can do to support uh, its claims that one had to do it this way. There was no other way of doing it. especially due to Mount Everest of torture, which top American diplomacy involved against me on American surface. They were using me throughout the world for espionage together with the other global superpowers. Uh, I don't actually, from the point of Eastern European, I don't understand from my point of view, from my perspective, I sincerely got to ask myself, um, I'm not Russian, you understand? Russia is very far from here. Not am I Serb. Serbia is very far from here. There is Bosnia. There is Croatia in between. It's not even in the area. In fact, the matter is, I'm related to them more than I'm related to Americans. More than I'm related to Germans, to the British. Yet, that's what's interesting about all this stuff, is that they had the upper hand of this case because of American presidents. I should say British politics, British royals, which preside American politics. So I don't know about Vietnam when I stated earlier how much beneficial would it be for Vietnam if the Vietnam would eventually become part of the mental illness. You get it? I don't think you would profit much. I see that South Korea is doing really well, uh, but too much of the mental illness as to how they refer to me is or and to the other countries that you know they took full advantage of it you have philippines and you have other countries in south america uh that wanted to go american way and it was just it just happened so that through american diplomacy russians uh you know got enough upper hand on on on, on certain countries that uh the people that put their hands in fire for NATO, for United States, they end up burning themselves, man. They became strangers in their own countries, kicked out, uh, killed left and right, ran to whatever, if they were lucky to give uh, some kind of protection. It's a very, very, very sad story. Um, with a lot a lot of stuff that is unknown to american public alone that it's it's a huge portion of this american society that does not know uh, it's a lot of uncertainty a lot of stuff something is eating united states of america there's something that's that's eating united states of america for america is not america and it's exactly what i told you jimmy carter was a cancer of American politics. This was a this was a transition from 
United States of America, the one that liberated the world during the World War II, the great America, the great American power that built first cars, first planes, factories, absolutely everything on a mass scale that made humanity uh, its existence more bearable and uh, prosperous in a sense of science, in a sense of, uh, uh, you know what I mean? It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a politic from Fotel, we say in Slovenia, Fotel, 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 it's like a sofas. You know what I mean? It's fucking easy come, easy go, whichever way wind blow, politic, with a lot of extortion, death threats involved when they have the opportunity. A friend indeed, friend in need is a friend in this type of politic. This was not the politic that was characteristic for the United States at the beginning of the end of the World War II, when they knew exactly what their job was, what they had to do to, to protect, advocate, to get, uh, you know, things on track. This is just my five minutes, one hour, two hours of Jimmy Carter. It may be what I'm going to give you here is a few photos. I don't know what to tell you. I see that the press is very excited about Jimmy Carter. Um, Jimmy Carter turns 99, how he defied the odds. Yeah, it must have been really difficult. Um, I'd like to know how much he's worth, but it really doesn't matter. Um, the people whom you're going to see on the videos were the people that were involved in MP Ultra. That means that Jimmy Carter, just like all other American presidents, had their locations, which appeared to them du during their presidencies as uh, locations with overwhelming people support. And those are also the locations that presidents like this, like all other presidents, uh, continue to use to depict their image to the world. So I know that the people that I see here in the media, uh, therefore, <laughs> a vacuum world of lies is how I refer to one of totally, totally controlled vacuum world of lies is trying to depict American politicians. The popularity, the, um, the news, the stuff like that that you see, and it's always based on previous acquaintances over the years, uh, and if only possible, they try to give an impression about overwhelming support is where they use areas uh, where, you know, they they got some kind of popularity, something through which their careers were launched. Sometimes, oftentimes, that goes literally into where their wives uh, are from, relatives are from, etc. They have all that kind of stuff. So I'm not particularly disturbed about all these stuff that I try to see. Also from the side of Jimmy Carter to my case, uh, if I would somehow be myself, basically, see myself as a human being, and not uh, somebody willing to, to but I, I am not going to go into this stuff here, I'm just going to go here to this, to these images here. Uh, I, I sure, I, I was certain that um, Oh, there is a picture with what also is like 
looks like an A right there, right? And that's what Jimmy Carter associated with my signature. Um, I am going to play this one here. Yeah, and that's a hat he would oftentimes post whenever, uh, at least whenever he would have me around, that's what he would be. He would always have this kind of hat. Okay, I don't see. Oh, that's wonderful then. I guess that the link expired or something like that. Finally. I'm not looking for no fucking job. I'm looking forward to finish this and move on with my life. It doesn't work like this. Oh. I suppose that there will be no no resume here available. So it did me no good.
Yeah, so for me to say, um, Well, this more or less is matching the my type of a my type of signature, and yeah, he posed with this kind of stuff. Because one of the things they did, they ransacked, always they ransacked my computers, downloaded email. They totally always, whenever they visited this place, they had their people download and upload to their drives, whatever, steal absolutely everything, whatever they possibly could get a hold of it. And yeah, they trace this online activities watch what you do and what you send out there and so on and so forth. This is a one uh, extremely pathetic individual, this uh, Jimmy Carter, I wouldn't give a shit. As far as his departure, as far as his service, uh, He ranks into the war criminal in my case, this individual. This is a war criminal. Mladic was a war criminal on Balkans concerning the Bosnian people, Croats, uh, involved in antique cleansing. This individual goes, in my case, into the same category of the people. He is, however, American president. I have anything else I would add to this Carter family. Seven months after announcing he was entering end-of-life hospice care, oh. former President Jimmy Carter and his wife Rosalind made a rare appearance during a peanut festival in their hometown of Plains, Georgia. Um, hometown of Georgia. Yeah. Um, he claimed that his legacy was, that his legacy was... Uh, Um, his legacy was a legacy of saving me, that it's the last thing that he wanted is to save me. This is what, what he claimed during MKUltra, really. Uh, Well, the politicians have one thing in common. They're all your best friend, and they pray God for one thing. It's basically for you to be dead before they are. And uh, the more the truth comes out, the more they curse you out. Never in the face. The more the, the, more the truth comes out, the more they hate you. That's Joe Biden back in the day. Uh, I was even told that the both are Irish, that, that the both share Irish roots by the Joe Biden. Uh, the most disgusting thing that uh, Rosaline Carter did to me was uh, basically engaging in a behavior of uh, posing in front of me as a Russian. This is a slow, basically, through the facial profiling, 
this is about as low as it gets. I, it doesn't uh, it doesn't get any lower than that. Anyhow, uh, these people hated me. They hated me to exist. They, uh, they just uh, didn't know how to apologize genocide against me. They were, uh, they truly were eager. Uh, Richard Nixon was involved in a physical torture. George Bush was involved in a physical torture. I would not even get into Donald Trump. Uh, I, I, I cannot, I can absolutely not relate to any American president in absolutely any way. I'm sorry. I did not profit anything from these people. Many of these people became millionaires, billionaires through this case. Um, uh, basically, uh, this uh, dismissive hateful behavior from Rosaline, I, uh, I did answer to one. I wish I could have done more than that, but uh, I couldn't. That's how they want to see this is they want to be seen like this. They want to be remembered like this, but they are never going to be remembered here like this. They are going to be remembered pretty much for this last picture, which was uh, the legacy they advocated against me. Yeah, I, uh, I found a list of the articles uh, where I see this video here is what I saw, this video here, a very short clip. I, I didn't see the whole thing. After the way they present announcing he was entering... He was using a mainstream service, uh, mainstream media to bully me, to harass me, to intimidate me. Uh, played in my eyes as uh, suggesting me what I accomplished and so on and so forth and then he would make the articles portraying himself as uh, how he's going to be portrayed and so on and stuff like this so and of personally that festival celebrations for Jimmy Carter's 99th birthday on October president to reach for me personally uh, yeah I mean if it would all depend on my views initially the disappearance of initially the disappearance of Rosalind Carter from the stage was translated to me by his staff, by his people, and by Jimmy Carter as assistance to me that he would come to rescue to me and uh, give me a witnessing, uh, confirm basically my 
claims on the blog, you know, uh, he, his wife claimed that didn't want to be part of this, but that if I would ever cross into Richard Nixon and his presidency and stuff like this on my blog, that he would give me uh, confirmation, etc., etc., etc. Uh, and it would all depend on basically on my attitude, on my conduct, on how I would pursue, and so on and so forth. The truth is, this is not the truth. This is what they all this this kind of stuff. It's always they always they always take your expectations to some place, and they always do this so they can crash you. Basically, they can psychologically destroy you as much as possible hurt you it's always based on hurting people because it also involved that other part that and if you're not and the, then he too he would disappear and when he would disappear as well it goes into the area of joe biden who advocated him and did all the possible that he could stress his garbage in my face uh, I would never get the proof about Josip Broz Tito, and nobody would ever assist me, etc., etc. Uh, just going over the articles that I have seen here about Jimmy Carter, uh, about this stuff, I found I find 90% uh, what I see myself in going over his um, his. Uh, interactions with me his staff the way uh he interpreted the stuff to me for me how to see one is and his wife and his family uh don't want to have absolutely anything to do with these people other than on the court i refuse to see myself in these people in absolutely any way this was not my president this was not my friend. This was the enemy, indifferent from Vladimir Putin, whom he assisted, best of his abilities. The evil grew closer to one another during what they refer to as my presidency. If if it's if it was if it was my presidency, then it was the evil that grew closer to one another. That's that's how I see this, and I will never see, I will always not see anything other than this. You know? Uh, if she's got a death certificate, fake death certificate, uh, be it. There's nothing I can do. Joe Biden, his administration, U.S. Congress, keeps me uh, with boot against my throat, against the floor against the wall there is nothing i can do they're doing everything possible to cause as much harm as much damage as possible uh, but hopefully there will be a day when i too in this world will get the status of the human being because of the beasts like this because of the beasts like this they had you had time these people george bush you had time to resolve this, you have plenty of time to assist. Yet the dinner between you and Jimmy Carter, in respect to Jimmy Carter and you, proved me your words inside of your house, inside of your home, the dinner we had, proved me that there was no sincerity in you. There was absolutely nothing that in me would regret my views on you and hopefully also actions, law enforcement actions against you. You're no good. As a human being, you're no good. None of, your, none of you were ever any good. It's the problem, I would stress to, to the people of the world, that victims face when Repeatedly, I was, I'm just giving you an example, delivered to these Trump Towers. 
you know, found myself around these people all the time. It's so impressive. It's that he actually convinces victim that it's impossible that something could go wrong, that something would, would possibly go wrong next to American presidents, next to, you know, seeing, interacting with the people like this, seeing uh, all sorts of people, wealth, that it could be such an evil in this world, that would be the world so evil that something could possibly go wrong, that things could not go in the right direction, which in 2013, when I was thrown into the psychiatric hospital, Ljubljana Polia, uh, it was really the proof about what exactly I was dealing with, what kind of people I was actually dealing with, what these people were up to, what these people wanted to do with me. This is, it's, it's unbelievable, except that in 2013, I not precisely know who did what? You understand what I'm saying? In 2013, I precisely did not know who did what and this and that, basically how to see it, because it was one evil that competed with the other evil. And one evil from Moscow, from Belgrade, from Ljubljana, this was one thing. And what Moscow, Ljubljana, Belgrade advocated them talking about the Washington DC, talking about London, Berlin, and so on, is someone that is protecting me, that is siding with me, and so on and so forth. Uh, despite them engaging in Mount Everest of crime, basically I was deciding about which side is greater evil. And in between meeting also people that next to the terror, next to the torture, would also present themselves as legitimate, as good portion of the audience of the participants in this in this whole thing from the Western Hemisphere, uh, that everything will be okay. Uh, and with the people who did evil, making also sure that next to the torture they were involved in, they would pose next to me also, eating ice cream, or on the beach, or at the lunch or dinner, and stuff like that. They were making photos, they were making all kinds of photos of me. Photos and videos of terror, of torture, and the photos and videos of eating ice cream with me. The person that is drugged up is defenseless person, does not have ability to stand up on himself, and if he does, his restraint, Mrs. Rosalind Carter, is pressed against the floor, squeezed, like, you know? Little the fuck do you know about the mental illness? Little do you know about the mental health? You are a beast, and so was your hobby. Still is. One of these days. I don't want to know about this uh, White House people. Uh, I don't. Clearly, clearly these people, based on the articles I go through, on the pictures, on the photos, clearly these people wanted me to curse them. Clearly they wanted me to hate them. Clearly today they asked for this article to look like this. This was their legacy. This is what they wanted. It's not I who made the choice about this. It's basically the diplomacy of sofas, of the soft sofas, coffees, uh, exactly what I described in this video. In my opinion, my views and my analysis, the United States of America is going to be facing great, great difficulties in the future. The West, in general, is going to be facing great, great difficulties. The input they invested in these things, in this whole policy, the way they prospered these things. I am a leading proof of American diplomacy, of what American diplomacy, for what one nation, one country, uh, unless you're German, unless you're Norwegian, unless you're from Sweden or Britain, what it truly is to you.
what how basically how you're seen as how they consider you where they exactly they see you as well good luck <laughs>